welcome back to the shop. So today um, we are going to pull the uh, yoke off the eight and three quarter. Um, it is a 7290 forged yoke. And what I'm gonna do is upgrade to a 1350. Um, so I had a drive shaft uh, issue where uh, it blew the cap out and essentially um, went under nitrous, you know, at the big end and blew the cap out, damaged the drive shaft and stuff. So I figured, well, it's probably time to upgrade from a 7290 to a 1350 U joint. Get a new drive shaft made and put a new front yoke in and all that. But what I don't want to do is have to pull the whole, you know, pig out, you know, and have to rebuild it and everything. So what you can do is you can mark the pinion nut, right? Mark the case, um, scribe it, do a little, you know, punch with it, you know, so there's a little mark on, you know, maybe a Sharpie on the case and a, like a punch mark on the pinion nut. Um, and then what we're going to do is take the pinion nut off. I'm going to pop the yoke out. I'm going to put a new pinion seal in since it's, it's been in there for, I don't know, maybe eight, 10 years now. Um, you know, it's eight bucks to get a new pinion seal from Dr. Diff, since that's where I'm going to order my new rear yoke from and also my front yoke for the drive shaft. They make a 1350 uh, 904 front yoke and you know for the drive shaft and then the yoke on the differential um, will also be a 1350. So uh, for like, I think it's like $170 plus shipping, um, I can get both yokes, which is pretty good price. So the, the deal for this video though is to show you how you can take the yoke off if you have to replace your pinion seal because it's leaking and then you can put your you know your current pinion back on um, or if you're replacing your pinion to a larger size like i am uh, to a more a stronger u-joint you know you can do that too um, and then replace your seal like i said while you're at it so let's jump under the car let's mark it let's take it off because i need to figure out i have a 489 case in mine and it can either be a 10 spline pinion or a, I think it's a 29 spline pinion. And I need to take it off so I can figure out which pinion I have. So that way I can order the correct rear yoke. So anyway, um, let me pop this apart or mark it first, take it apart, pop the yoke off, and then um, we'll pop the seal off. We'll take a look at the part number on the seal and make sure you know I'm getting the right seal. Cause you can get also get them off Amazon for like $12, $13 for like Timkins one. Timpkin ones, and I'll put in link um, to uh, like a pinion seal and a pinion nut if you really want to place the nut, but then you won't have your mark where you put it back on. And the key is when you put the nut back on to use just a, you don't need a lot of red Loctite guys, just like a, a drop or two of red Loctite to put the nut back on to hold it in place. Um, and we'll do that when we go ahead and reassemble it. But anyway, let's jump into the car, rip this thing apart, figure out which one I need, get parts ordered, and then we'll come back and reassemble it um, and go from there. And guys, this what I'm doing applies really to all makes and models. You know, it's just not for a Mopar with a removable center section. You know, whether it's a Ford or GM or whatever, pretty much what we're doing, you can do to, you know, any other make and model for the most part. Guys, before you do this, also make sure you put your vehicle up on jack stands you know, if you're on an incline and you try taking the drive shaft out right, your car is going to roll down the incline. Because once you remove the drive shaft, you know, there's nothing holding this in place unless you chalk your tire. So safety first, put your vehicle up on jack stands so you've got plenty of room to work. Just a little safety announcement. All right, guys. So what I've done is you can see I've marked here with the Sharpie. It's off just the hair, but basically I... Uh, Dimpled it right there with a punch, and then I also put a little Sharpie mark up here as well. So we'll make sure that this is aligned when I go ahead and put, you know, the yoke back on. Um, the reason it's important, you know, we mark this is this has a crush sleeve in it. So it's already been pre-crushed, if you will. I don't think, but basically, you know, we want to mark this, right? So that way when we go ahead and put this back on, um, you know, we can tighten it. Uh, from this mark to here, you know, and, and we should have a nice good fit from that standpoint. Um, so that way, you know, I don't have to get a new crush sleeve and reset the rear end up and everything. It should be just fine. And you can see, you know, we're only talking a couple threads up here showing. So let me go ahead and get my impact, rip this off. We'll knock the yoke off. Let's 
some point. All right, guys, so we've got the pinya nut off and I also pulled out the little washer um, that came with it. So basically, right, here's our washer and pinya nut. Again, we're trying to keep, that's why I also marked this up here now, so that way I can keep this in line with this, you know, because now that we've got the nut off, right, we can, basically this just slid off for mine. Um, I was lucky, this just kind of popped right out. Uh, she is gonna drain fluid out, so make sure you have a drain pan there. Sorry if uh, my light was doing that. And you can see here, I do have probably the, this is definitely not the 10 spline, this is more the 29 spline. It's okay that it's draining some out. I'll just uh, get some new stuff and we'll fill it back up, you know, after we uh, rip the pinion seal off. So anyway, guys, let me, and yeah, we might as well just let it drain out. We'll put some fresh in and some fresh friction modifier. So I will definitely need, because I still am running a limited slip or a sure grip, whatever you guys want to call it, right? Being the Mopar crowd. Um, you know, we'll have to get some friction, uh, some friction modifier as well. Uh, when we put the uh, fresh gear lube in, so we've got some fresh of that. It's probably a good time to do it um, since we've got this apart, you know, and we're draining the fluid out anyway at this point. So let me go ahead and pop the seal off. We'll check the part number. Like I said, we'll get some parts ordered and come back, and then I'll show you, you know, putting this all back together. Unfortunately, guys, there was no part number on the seal. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll go onto rockauto.com, and it's a great resource to look up part numbers, especially for like seals and gaskets and miscellaneous brake parts and things like that. So that's one of the resources I will use to look up the part number for this. Um, so like I said, I'll throw a couple part numbers in the description if you're interested in this. And like I said, I'm going to Dr. Diff and I'll get myself a new yoke. Uh, this is like I said, a 7290. We'll step up to a 1350. We need a new drive shaft made and then a new you know, yoke for the dry shaft. That's also a 1350 yoke. Um, so that way, you know, we've got uh, some nice, big, sturdy parts in the drive line. All right, guys. So I got my new 1350 yoke in. Here's my 7290 yoke. And I'll show you a couple of subtle differences between them. Um, this is just the old seal on here. This actually has a splash shield on it. Here's my new seal that I'm gonna put in as well. And I'll put a part number in. Um, and a link to like Amazon for this seal. The other thing I'll do is put a link in for the Mopar friction modifier that I'm gonna run. This was like $7.15 for this bottle. And I probably could have gotten it locally cheaper, but Amazon was quick and easy. Um, so if you notice here, here is a ridge, right? Where the cap will basically you know, go in here and the cap cannot come out. On this style here, it's all smooth. Basically, it uses a clip on the inside to keep the cap, you know, in so the cap doesn't come out. Um, so there's a subtle difference there. If you look, they're basically the same width, right? There's not really a huge difference between a 7290 and a 1350. The cap sizes look to be very similar without me measuring them. However, if you look at the hole openings, right, hole openings are much larger here and the straps are a lot heavier um, versus a 7290. You know, they're the same, approximately the same width. Actually, it's a little wider. Um, and obviously, they're not gonna fit in there, but they'll drop right into 1350 here. So these are much heavier duty straps um, than the 7290 setup. Uh, the splines are the same. Uh, these are both billet yokes. Um, you can see there versus this one as well. Um, anyway, we'll probably keep this one for a while. Maybe I'll sell it. But uh, this is a, I believe it was 29 spline is what this is, uh, is what I said. So we'll go ahead and bolt this one in. Um, and we will use the Loctite that I also ordered, the red Loctite, we'll put a couple drops on the nut. So when we go to tighten it, you know, we're gonna reuse the nut and reuse the spacer. And like I said, based on the markings, then we'll tighten it down to those markings. Um, so the red Loctite will help hold it in. Um, so hopefully this doesn't come loose on us.
And that way, like I said, the, normally there's a crush sleeve in the rear end, um, that crush sleeve, you know, or there's a solid spacer. I'm not sure which one this has in it. Uh, I bought the third member uh, built from somebody that I know. Um, and he couldn't remember if it was a, a solid or a crush sleeve in it. So anyway, let's crawl into the car. We'll slip this on with our markings, put on the thread locker, um, tighten up the bolt, and this part of it will be done. All right, guys, so what I'm going to do is uh, I just have the seal set in place for a second. I'm going to go ahead and take it back off and lube this up real good. So when we put the yoke on, you know, it slips on, it's got some uh, oil, uh, a little grease or something on it. So that way, you know, initially when it spins, it's got some lubricant on it. I've got, you know, the mark here, set up with the mark here. Um, so when we do the nut, remember with the punch mark, it lines up with the marks. Um, the other thing I'm gonna do is take a little brake clean and clean off the threads here real quick. That way when we put the little bit of red Loctite on, uh, you know, it's got a nice dry surface, clean surface to adhere to um, between, you know, this and the pinion nut. So let me go ahead and clean this with a little brake clean, knock this on, we'll slip the, uh, the yoke on, and then we'll come back here and I'll show you the, the next step. All right, guys, figured I'd give you a quick little check-in, right? The seal's on, I've got this on, um, and... I uh, started just kind of running it down with the nut on here. The nut is not, no thread locker yet on it. Um, just started running it down. I'm going to take the nut now off. And now we'll put the thread locker on it. Now, the one thing you've noticed here is something I've added is this little paddle. So that way when I'm tightening it, you know, I can hold the paddle here, if you will. Um, and then, you know, to keep it from rotating while I'm trying to tighten the nut down. Now, if you want, you know, if you guys want to give it a few ugly duggas, you know, with your impact gun, that's up to you. I'm going to go ahead and hand tighten this on. I hope not to have to use my impact to give it some of those ugly duggas. So, and then when we're done getting the, you know, the, uh, let's see, where's my mark? Uh, there it is. My mark, right, lined up, right, with right here. So let me go ahead now, put a little thread locker on this. We'll run this nut down. I'll show you that when I get the marks all lined up. Um, and then, you know, we should only see a couple of the threads sticking out of the pinion here when we're done. All right, guys, it may be hard to see, but there's the mark. You know, here's our mark. You know, we've got her lined up. There's only a couple threads showing like there was originally. Um, so she is nice and tight. So, you know, we've got no play here, um, like we shouldn't. What you hear is the drum clunking, because <laughs> um, I've got the rims off the car. That's drum clunking. Anyway, so we've got her lined up. You know, the marks are good to go. So now we can come over here. Right here is your drain, your fill. Um, we'll add the friction modifier now, the new uh, little tube of it, the four ounces. And we'll top it off with gear lube, um, just so it's starting to drip out the hole, right? Um, so you can squeeze just a hair more of it if you want. But basically, once it starts kind of dripping out the hole, it's full. And then we are all set with our, you know, if you're doing a yoke upgrade like I'm doing, that's what you need to do. I would recommend you doing the pinion seal while you're at it. If you're just doing a pinion seal and reusing your yoke, this is what you need to go through. Guys, so, you know, we filled it full of friction modifier, threw some 8090 gear lube in it. Um, yeah, I'll put some links in the descriptions here of, you know, where where I got some of my stuff. Uh, you know, my yoke I got from Dr. Diff, going from a 13, or I'm sorry, 7290 to a 1350. Um, you know, I'll put a pinion seal part number in. I'll put the friction modifier part number in. I'll put, you know, some of the gear lube in, um, you know, all stuff to Amazon that you can, you can get, you know, real easy. So anyway, guys, I hope this video gave you an idea, uh, at least for an eight and three quarter, right? These are the parts for an eight and three quarter. This still applies to a Ford. It still applies to a GM, you know, other makes and models. So the idea, the principles are all still the same. But, you know, the, the script parts I'm putting in is strictly for an eight and three quarter 489 case. Um, so you need to make sure that they'll work for your application. Anyway, guys, I uh, hope this video helped you out. Oh, and just a safety thing, right? Make sure you do it on flat surface, not on an incline. 
you know, if you are going to do an incline, chalk your tire so the car is not going to roll out from under you once you pull the drive shaft out, right? We're rolling down the driveway or whatever. So make sure you do it on a flat surface with jack stands, you know, safety, safety, safety. Anyway, my little disclosure there about uh, doing it. Anyway, guys, uh, thank you for watching, liking, sharing, you know, commenting, all that stuff. I very much appreciate it. All the money that I make from these videos, which is not a whole lot, goes right back into these cars. So thank you all. Have a great day in your shop. Talk to you or see, talk to you on the next upload or maybe on an event. Stop by and say hello.